China has just unveiled the DF-26D, a powerful new version of its Guam killer missile, and it's creating serious buzz. This system isn't just an upgrade. It's designed with advanced features that could challenge existing defenses and reshape the balance of power across the Pacific. In this video, we'll uncover what makes the DF-26D unique, why it matters, and how it could transform regional strategy. The DF-26D stands out because it is not just a continuation of China's missile development program, but a major leap forward in both range and adaptability. Originally introduced in 2016, the DF-26 family quickly earned the nickname Guam Killer because of its ability to reach the American island of Guam, over 5,000 kilometers away. That range placed a vital U.S. hub for bombers, submarines, and logistics well within striking distance. What makes the DF-26D significant is how it appears to improve on this legacy with modernized features. Reports suggest this new variant may integrate hypersonic glide vehicles, a technology where China already leads globally. Hypersonic glide vehicles travel at extreme speeds, often above Mach 5, while maintaining maneuverability, making them difficult for existing missile defense systems to intercept. If such vehicles are mounted on the DF-26D, it would greatly enhance its ability to bypass defenses like THAAD and SM-3 interceptors. Another possibility is that the missile carries multiple re-entry vehicles, allowing one launch to overwhelm protective layers through sheer numbers. Beyond potential payload advances, the DF-26D is believed to feature improved targeting systems, with active radar seekers and multispectral sensors that would allow it to identify and follow moving targets at sea. That capability transforms it into more than a land attack missile. It could threaten highly mobile naval groups. Such flexibility makes it the only intermediate-range missile in the world confirmed to have both anti-ship and ground attack roles. Its mobility is another defining strength. Mounted on road mobile launchers, the DF-26D can be relocated frequently, making detection and preemptive neutralization far more difficult. Combined with China's expanding network of satellites and surveillance assets, this mobility ensures the missile can be positioned and targeted quickly. The DF-26D is distinctive not only because of its impressive range, but also due to its multi-role flexibility, its likely integration of advanced vehicles, and its survivability through mobility. The introduction of the DF-26D has broad consequences for regional strategy, particularly for the United States and its allies. The island of Guam is central to U.S. operations in the Pacific, it houses Anderson Air Force Base, home to B-52 and B-1 bombers, and a naval base that supports submarines and logistics. With a range exceeding 5,000 kilometers, the DF-26D can hold this critical hub at risk, complicating planning for forward operations. Recent studies have suggested that even limited conventional strikes on Guam could disrupt its functioning. This makes the DF-26D more than a technical achievement. It's a lever of influence. It pressures the U.S. to invest heavily in new defenses, such as upgraded interceptors and layered systems, to ensure continued operations from the island. In fact, billions are already being committed to expanding missile defense architecture on Guam, but the pace of China's advancements raises questions about whether such measures can keep up. Another major implication is the threat to naval groups. U.S. carrier strike groups are symbols of power projection operating with strong protective shields that include SM-3 and SM-6 interceptors. Yet, the DF-26DS maneuverable vehicles and potential multiple warhead loadouts present a serious challenge. For the first time, the credibility of these protective layers may be uncertain in contested environments, altering calculations about where carriers can safely operate. There is also a layer of strategic ambiguity. Like earlier DF-26 variants, the DF-26D is thought to retain both conventional and nuclear options. This dual capability complicates interpretation during crises. If such a missile were launched, it would be nearly impossible to know what type of payload it carried until impact, adding a layer of uncertainty that makes decision-making more complex. Finally, 
The DF-26D ties into China's growing kill chain, a network of space-based sensors, drones, and command systems that feed real-time data into its missiles. Together, these factors mean the DF-26D is not simply another piece of equipment. It reshapes how adversaries must think about operations, defenses, and deterrence in the Pacific theater. The unveiling of the DF-26D ripples well beyond China and the United States. For regional players such as Japan, Australia, and Taiwan, the missile's introduction raises the stakes of future defense planning. These countries now face a reality where even facilities far from China's mainland may be within range of precision strikes. This complicates their reliance on U.S. extended deterrence and increases urgency to develop independent capabilities. Japan, for example, has already committed to expanding its own long-range strike systems and missile defense programs. Australia, under the AUKUS agreement, is exploring ways to integrate advanced missile systems and develop its own defensive network. Taiwan, meanwhile, faces heightened challenges as the DF-26D could potentially be used to target critical infrastructure or naval assets with greater precision. The broader consequence is an acceleration of the regional arms competition. By introducing a system that combines range, precision, and multi-role functionality, China is setting a benchmark that others feel compelled to respond to. The U.S. has already accelerated projects such as hypersonic interceptors and the Pacific Deterrence Initiative to counterbalance these capabilities. Beyond immediate military responses, the DF-26D highlights a trend in global missile development, the merging of conventional and advanced technologies into flexible platforms. Countries like Russia and North Korea have already demonstrated intermediate-range missiles carrying hypersonic glide vehicles, but the DF-26 remains unique as a proven dual-role system. Its public debut signals to the world that China can field such advanced technology at scale. This trend raises questions for global security. Systems that can carry both conventional and nuclear payloads create uncertainty, complicating arms control and crisis management. Without clear separation, the risk of misunderstanding increases. That is why discussions around disentangling nuclear and conventional forces are becoming more pressing, yet so far China has not separated the two in this missile family. In essence, the DF-26D is more than a regional development. It reflects a shift in how modern missiles are being designed and deployed globally. The unveiling of the DF-26D isn't just about a single missile, it's about what it represents. With its range beyond 5,000 kilometers, likely integration of advanced vehicles, and dual mission roles, it showcases how quickly missile technology is moving into a new era of precision and adaptability. For the Indo-Pacific, it alters how bases, naval assets, and defense networks must be planned. For the world, it signals that future missile systems will be harder to predict, harder to defend against, and more deeply tied into advanced sensor networks. The big lesson? We're watching the boundaries of modern deterrence being redrawn in real time. How countries respond, through defense upgrades, cooperation, or new diplomatic efforts, will decide whether these technologies create stability through balance or instability through uncertainty. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching and see you next time.